everyone. I'm Michael Stelma, and yeah, so today we will be talking about uh, using GenAI in audit. And I have actually uh, two more co speakers uh, who did not manage to come. So it's uh, Uli Daniel, Director of Corporate Edit at Hapak Lloyd, and uh, Tanya Senikova, Senior Solutions Architect at Databricks. Uh, I'm also a product specialist uh, at Databricks. So all of us we have uh, been working on this project, and I think uh, we'll be also continuing that. Okay, now uh, to the agenda. Today uh, we'll be talking about enhanced audit at Hapak Lloyd. So uh, at first I will do a very short introduction about what, uh, who Hapak Lloyd is, what, is, what do they do, and after that uh, we'll discuss the use cases we have uh, implemented. Uh, basically we have implemented uh, automated generation of findings and executive summary and uh, also a chatbot which allows them, which allows auditors to easily look up different uh, things uh, in the manuals, uh, process manuals and different documentation. And after that, we will take a look at the next steps. Okay, so uh, Habak Lloyd is uh, actually a pretty old company, 160 year old company. They are doing uh, container shipment, uh, shipping, like the containers are all over the world. Um, and it's actually a really innovative company. Uh, lately, they have equipped the, each container, uh, more than uh, like around 2 million containers with the real-time tracking devices. And basically it means that they are processing all the data. So it's uh, just a fun fact. Um, really big and innovative company. And we were working with the corporate audit department uh, for uh, actually um, more than a year to optimize the way how, uh, how auditors uh, write the summaries, uh, write the findings and conduct the audit. And um, now I will uh, talk a little bit about that. So uh, what is audit? Uh, auditors, uh, internal audit, uh, usually most of the big companies, uh, public companies are doing that. And uh, usually what auditors do, they check if the ODT or the department they are auditing uh, adhering to all the manuals, all the process rules, uh, process documentation, and if they are basically documenting everything correctly uh, and conducting the business, doing the business in the right way. And how does it actually work? The auditors doing a lot of interviews with uh, different uh, people. Uh, in the department, they are auditing, they are also checking uh, a lot of uh, data sets, uh, data sources and systems uh, that uh, the uh, department is using. And in some cases, if something is not right or does not correspond 100% to how it actually should be, they are writing the findings. And basically, it's just a free text. And uh, also, the audit is done by multiple people can be, I think, more than 10 people in some cases, uh, maybe even more. And so everybody can have multiple findings. So at the end of the day, after, after they kind of conducted all the interviews and everything they did, uh, they can have like really a big number of those findings. And that's uh, basic like, and after that they write the report, the final report, which uh, is, so to say, just a list of findings, but there is one very important piece on top of that uh, is called executive summary. That's what the board is going to see. And that's very important that the executive summary is written in the like really way that the board is going to read and uh, going to really take attend, like really um, understand and try to make some actions out of it. Um, because of that, it's like very important uh, piece of the report and uh, the report itself. Uh, in reality, writing this report is a long process, and those initial findings they don't uh, make into the report straight away. In reality, uh, there are a lot of, uh, let's say, points where those findings are read, uh, revised, maybe rewritten, and it's very important that uh, the whole report is written kind of, they use the same tone of language, the same vocabulary, um, same kind of style. Uh, because like different people read it and uh, different people can basically approve or not approve each finding. So uh, the idea here is to make this whole writing piece easier and to make it easier for like basically uh, make it easier to 
uh, for this report to sound as like so that it, it kind of was written by one person is just to use an LLM because the LLM uses the same style. If we want to change the style, we can even fine tune it. We haven't done it here. I'll go into that a bit later. But still, an LLM usually writes the data into the, writes text in the same way. It has its kind of own voice and uh, style. And uh, the idea here is that at first, let the auditors write uh, just the bullet points, uh, something very simple, and let the LLM uh, enhance it and write the actual nice text. And after that, after we have all our uh, findings, we can also use an LLM to summarize all that into the executive summary. And that can be also like a two-stage process. I'll talk about that uh, a bit later. Okay, so now let's uh, talk about our first use case, so gener uh, generating findings in the exact summary. And uh, we have, we had very, uh, I think standard stages, which most of the ML projects uh, had. So we have defined our uh, business problem and what actually we wanted to do. And uh, one, one very important piece for all of the uh, Gen AI uh, projects, uh, we need an evaluation data set. So we really need something what we can uh, use to, after that, make a judgment call if our model actually does a good job or not. Or maybe if we want to use multiple models, uh, then we would need to um, compare them. So that's where evaluation data set uh, will be needed. And of course, we need some metrics. If, we, if it's just a custom evaluation data set, in that case, we can just say, okay, uh, the percentage of things, uh, of entries we did kind of in right, in right way. Uh, of course, with the Gen AI, probably we would need a bit more metrics, but I'll talk about that later as well. And after that, we can do the data preparation. We can choose our base model. And of course, we will use evaluation data set to pick this uh, best model. Uh, we can do the prompt engineering uh, and evaluate the final results. By evaluating the final results, actually, I mean not only uh, like using some automated tools, but like using domain experts for that. And after that, uh, model deployment and creating uh, the actual chat interface. So here is a high level architecture of uh, the project. Uh, so we had a pipeline which uh, ingests the observations uh, because they have an auditing system which actually, um, which auditors are using during audit. And then we have uh, our uh, findings. So uh, the, as you can see, uh, we have here a few short prompting. So the uh, users uh, or the auditors, they write their findings as the like bullet points, and after that, all that uh, gets into LLM, and the LLM generates one finding after another. And of course, they have an ability to revise this text, or maybe make some changes and regenerate it again, and at the end of the day, say, okay, that's what I really want to write down to the database, and that's kind of my real finding. And after that, it's like a next process, a stage in the process, we can uh, just uh, load all the findings from the database and generate the executive summary. Okay, a uh, couple of words about modeling. So we have started this project long time ago. So the first model they have actually tried and used was MPT-30B. Uh, after that, like when we created the actual prototype, we have used uh, Llama 270B, which is a really capable model and uh, just generates text in the best way. Um, and uh, we have also used Mixcloud for a while, and now we are using DBRX. Um, couple of words about DBRX. It's a new model uh, which was pre-trained by Databricks. Uh, we have uh, two like, flavors, base and instruct. We are using, of course, instruct. So DBRX is a transformer-based model, so it uh, like, predicts uh, the it's all uh, dec like all decoder only model that pre it predicts just the next token, next word, and uh, it was pre-trained on the publicly available data. Was trained on 12 trillion tokens, and it supports 32k of the context window. So uh, Mixtral also supports 32k. That's why actually we switched to Mixtral in the first place, because for Llama it's just 4k. And uh, yeah, so DBRX is a fine-grained mixture of experts. So it means that we have, it's a big model and we have those experts and we are not using all of them at the same time. That makes it inference uh, faster. 
Um, okay. Uh, then uh, let's talk now a little bit uh, about uh, evaluation. So at first, uh, as I said, we have kind of to start with the evaluation data set, but in reality, we didn't have evaluation data set at all. Uh, we just had the findings. All of the findings they have over the last, I don't know, couple of years. So what we did, we used uh, back then in PT30B to generate the bullet points, basically to summarize the uh, finding into the bullet points. And then we have asked the main expert to actually experts to go, like real auditors, to go over all those uh, generated findings and to improve them, adjust, or just say that it's great, kind of. It's really those bullet points uh, really show what uh, we have here. And after that, we have used this data set for the evaluation and for uh, multiple uh, things. And now, uh, for the actual evaluation, we are using two approaches uh, to do it fast. We are using MLflow capability, like LLM as a judge, judge capability, where we are using, uh, we are asking a big LLM to uh, evaluate and uh, make this judgment call if uh, the finding is written in the correct way and there are multiple metrics which we can use. Uh, in our particular case, we are mostly trying to make sure that all the information is captured in the right way and also uh, that kind of it, like, it sounds nice. But for different use cases, of course, we can uh, use a lot more metrics and we can also uh, uh, we can also define the metrics ourselves, but uh, in this particular project, we did not do it. And now uh, about the integration, so all the models uh, were uh, we served using Databricks uh, model serving. So uh, for the LLM, uh, we are using foundational models, API, so like provision throughput endpoints, and uh, the actual, like the chain, which does the prompt engineering and like applies all this logic, it's a small, it's also model served with, uh, with our model serving, but it's a small CPU-based model. And we are using Gradio as a chat interface. So right now it's still like a pilot, uh, but it's already used um, by auditors, but still it's a pilot for now. Okay, and now uh, the architecture for that. Basically the pattern, uh, the pattern we use here, it's prompt engineering. So when the user sends uh, a request, then uh, the web application which you see here, it's our Gradio app, it uh, looks, uh, looks up the prompt and applies the prompt to the user query, and then it sends uh, our uh, request or our, like, full prompt to the model serving, to the foundational model uh, deployed on Databricks, and uh, the model itself, uh, we just uh, imported it from the uh, marketplace, which we have on Databricks. Uh, in this marketplace, we have most of the, let's say, models people want to use right now. So things like Llama 2, Llama 3, DBRX, uh, Mistral, Mixtral, uh, Azea. And uh, we are also using uh, monitoring to and inference tables to actually store all the requests. It's a really nice thing if you want after that to evaluate and see what's actually happening. That's like a very nice feature. And that's how our first prototype uh, looked like. After that, we have improved it a little bit. So basically, we have now here uh, two parts. One is for the uh, actual finding generation, and another one is for the executive summary, how it really looks, uh, uh, how it works. Auditors just write their bullet points, uh, press the generate button, then they get the generated text. They can also add uh, different, uh, let's say, set the context. In some cases, if they have uh, if they have uh, findings which kind of correspond to one, uh, something very, very similar, then it makes sense to add something to the context. And basically, so they get the finding. And if they uh, go for the exact summary, they can just put there the number of the report, uh, the findings will be automatically loaded, and then uh, we can generate executive summary. What also they do really often, they remove some findings, which let's say are less, uh, important, uh, so basically they can edit everything that is kind of, uh, that was loaded and is going to be sent to the LLM. So that's uh, how it looks like now. Uh, it's, let's say, a second version. And now let's talk about maybe the most interesting part about the chatbot, which uh, allows uh, auditors to look up information. So why it's important, uh, there are hundreds of uh, different documents, manuals, 
different uh, PDFs, uh, PPTs, and other documents which describe how the company actually should function, how the departments should conduct the business, for example, what, uh, in which case they can give some discount, in which case they cannot give it, in, in which case they can kind of, um, like basically all the business uh, issues and all the business um, details uh, are described there. And those details, of course, do change. And uh, it's important to, to be able to uh, kind of easily find uh, those details, find those actual uh, rules easily. And that's why uh, we have created this chatbot, which allows them just to write textual queries and to, um, and the chatbot is going just to answer, like give the answer, give the textual answer, but on top of that, it's also going to uh, show which documents were used for that so that the uh, auditors can uh, go back to the actual documentation and check the uh, actual uh, documents. Uh, okay, so that's basically our uh, RAG pattern, so retrieval augmented generation. Let's uh, discuss a little bit how it's actually working. So in reality, what RAG does, uh, like your LLM, by default, it knows a lot, but it does not know how uh, what rules are applicable at Hapakloid. And with RAG, we're just injecting that knowledge, injecting uh, all that, what is like really specific to Hapakloid, into LLM without actually changing it. So how does it work? So we have so-called RAG chain. Uh, here we have implemented it using one chain framework, uh, but there are a bunch of others. And when the user sends an actual uh, query, at first, uh, the RAG chain goes to the vector database and uh, uses vector base to get the similar chunks. And all the documents, of course, they are chunked before uh, they, go, they get into the vector database. So basically, we get the similar uh, chunks uh, of our manuals and documentation. Then uh, it goes back to the uh, RAG chain and we use the prompt to uh, format this big prompt, which now co uh, contains the like these documents, uh, we call it context, and uh, the actual questions that the user has uh, asked. And after that, all that uh, is being sent to our uh, large language model. So to Llama, to DBRX or Llama 3. Um, that's basically what RAG is. And uh, now uh, project stages uh, for that particular uh, project. In reality, it looks, uh, almost the same, but the difference is that now here uh, we have data preparation step, which is really important. So uh, now we need to parse all the documents we have, we need to chunk them, and the way you chunk actually uh, makes a big difference. Uh, it can improve or it can improve the performance of your whole application and the question answerability, or it can actually make it a lot worse. Uh, then we, of course, calculate in embeddings and ingesting the data into vector search. I'll talk about the technicalities a little bit later. And then, of course, we have to choose the model. And uh, choose the model uh, basically uh, means that in reality, you want to choose your large language model for all of the use cases in the same time because you don't want to deploy uh, two models uh, in the same time because it's basically just a cost. So in our case, we're using exactly the same model. Uh, they're also using DBRX for that. Uh, and yeah, then uh, prompt engineering and uh, evaluation uh, the results. And for RAG, it's uh, a good idea to evaluate independently retrieval performance and the overall performance. And after that, of course, now we have to deploy our data pipelines, uh, deploy the model, and we are using actually the same chat interface. We just added another tab where people can uh, ask questions. Okay, so the high-level architecture, uh, we have now um, the data, uh, those uh, PDFs which we have in the Unity catalog volume, and we have a pipeline which uh, parses uh, those files, uh, does the chunking, calculates embeddings, and after that uh, ingests, uh, ingests uh, all those chunks into the uh, vector search, uh, so in vector index. And then uh, when the gray, like somebody writes the question in Gradio, uh, we query the data, we, query, we get the similar documents from the vector index and then uh, use an LLM to produce the actual response. 
Now a couple of words about vector search. So uh, vector search is like a Databricks uh, service, uh, Databricks product offering, uh, which allows you to synchronize a delta table which you have in Unity catalog with the vector index. And you need to have like multiple columns. So the most important one is text. So that's uh, going to be the text which uh, we will uh, look for. And we also can have multiple uh, additional columns which we can use for filtering. And we have an ID column. And you can also uh, use vector search in uh, multiple modes. So you can, uh, when you create the vector search index, you can say, okay, here is the embedding endpoint uh, I would like to use. So it will automatically call this endpoint and calculate embeddings. Or alternatively, you can uh, pre-calculate embeddings beforehand and you can just directly uh, send text and embeddings in the same time. And you can uh, like create this vector search index uh, using UI uh, in Unity catalog, or you can create using an API. And after that, uh, when you like really use it inside the long chain chain, uh, that's like on the right hand side, you can see the example code. You just say index.similarity search, and then you can uh, provide the query text and the additional filters. And of course, the columns you want to get back. And uh, here, of course, um, in this example, you can see that embeddings are going to be calculated automatically. Um, okay. Um, and yeah, so we have uh, integration uh, of vector index uh, with Langchain and Llama index. So if you use one of those frameworks, you can uh, easily use uh, vector search. And we also have the uh, same integration for the uh, large language models deployed on uh, Databricks. And another important piece, uh, after we create our chain, after we finalize the prompt and everything, we want to deploy that. And to actually uh, do the deployment, we are using MLflow. So with MLflow, we can serialize our chain as a model and we can store it in Unity catalog. And we can basically implement the whole LLM ops uh, around that because in Unity catalog, uh, we can um, add aliases to our models and we can like do the integration tests and we can automate this whole thing. And after that, we can deploy this chain as uh, to uh, the uh, model serving. And now uh, uh, the architecture for the rack pattern. So at first we have this data preparation part where we uh, ingest the doc documents, uh, we parse those documents so we have to like clean them, uh, chunk it, as I mentioned, uh, this chunking strategy is actually quite important and that's like basically done with the notebooks. And after that, we um, just write it to the delta table and the uh, vector search can automatically synchronize the uh, delta table with the online vector uh, search index. Um, by the way, if you don't want this pipeline to be always active, uh, it's also possible to do it in a triggered or scheduled way. So that's actually what we, does, uh, what we did. Uh, we are not doing it uh, all the time. We are doing it, uh, I think it's run something like uh, once uh, in a couple of hours. And we're also pre-calculating embeddings. And after that, uh, that's like the uh, architecture of the chain, which we have like all of the like real time piece of that. So when uh, uh, the users access our application, so that's our Gradio UI, uh, at first we send our, our question to this uh, small uh, model where we have deployed a long chain chain and we use vector search to uh, grab our documents or so our chunks and we apply the prompt and send the whole prompt to the uh, foundational model. And here we can integrate or we can activate in both, uh, on both levels uh, inference tables to uh, monitor and to uh, like get all the, um, everything that was sent to those respective models. So user queries or the whole prompts. And uh, here you can see uh, the whole architecture together. And uh, basically, that's uh, the uh, actual uh, UI. So that's how it looks now. So we have uh, now another tab. <clears throat> and basically, the users can type their queries and they can uh, see 
uh, the results uh, and uh, in addition to just showing the results we are also including uh, we are also including the references so the references means basically the full path to the uh, documents uh, the full path uh, like so that they can like, go to their um, SharePoint or some similar system and uh, look up and see what exactly we have uh, what exactly they have there in those documents and maybe read a little bit more. And uh, now a couple of words about uh, what, do, what do we want to do next. So at first uh, we want to actually uh, finalize the evaluation. So as I mentioned before, we are doing using LLM as a judge approach for the evaluation. So we would like to make it better and fully automated and make it uh, so that when we basically deploy a new version of the model, the uh, pipeline is automatically triggered and we automatically deploy, um, automatically um, run the integration test. Uh, and as part of this integration test, of course, we can run uh, LLM as a judge test. Um, we're also uh, thinking about fine tuning our model to uh, make it uh, kind of so that the model really learns uh, the language that auditors are using uh, because uh, right now we cannot really change the style uh, how the uh, the style so how the uh, let's say the tone and uh, vocabulary and basically the style of text so how the model is uh, what model generates so that's exactly where fine tuning can help our issue here is that we don't have uh, enough uh, text for that so um, that's basically the challenge and here we can probably try to generate similar data and use it for fine tuning or maybe just try to get uh, a bit more history. It's maybe something that Hapacloid would do uh, next. Uh, and we also would like to uh, use a Mosaic AI agent evaluation framework and uh, RAG framework. That's a new product that uh, Databricks announces. I think uh, they're going to be announced maybe tomorrow. So stay tuned, I think the keynote should be re uh, really, really interesting. So that's what we will uh, use as well to automate most of the pieces uh, of the uh, deployment process uh, and also to allow domain experts, basically to provide domain experts with a nice way of uh, chatting with the model and giving feedback. Because uh, right now we don't have like uh, very specific feedback from the domain experts, we just have good or bad and that's uh, not always uh, helpful. And also we are going to expand into uh, different uh, business departments who actually would like to have something very similar, so the similar chatbot uh, capability. Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs>